This is Jane Bianco, curator at the Farnsworth. We have three works by Stephen Pace in the Farnsworth collection that give an idea of how he changed direction stylistically and with his interests as he pursued his painting career. Painter and printmaker Stephen Pace shifted his professional interest from precision in his architectural renderings and plein air watercolor sketches early in his artistic career to World War II poster designs, to murals, to large-scale abstract oil paintings, and finally to suggestions of figures and their surroundings in his later work. He grew up on farms in the Midwest, raised on hard work, as he and his siblings helped helped manage the sustenance farming his parents conducted on rental properties. He learned to take care of animals, to plant, harvest, and sell vegetables. And as a teenager, he took free art classes in his spare time, offered during the New Deal era as part of an WPA program. Later in life, some of his paintings recall this youthful, hard scrabble environment. Drafted into the military during World War II, he was stationed in England and France serving in the infantry and as a war artist, designing posters, sketching troops, and because of his drafting skills, helping to design a textile factory for the war effort. In Paris, he met Gertrude Stein and her circle of artist friends, including Picasso. In 1945, he first took a two-month artist residency in a San Miguel Allende monastery in Mexico. And there he discovered, for lack of willing models, that first-hand figure studies would not dominate his paintings. He recollected years later, I was in a hurry after five years in the service, so I would just push paint around on the canvas, blobs of color, until figures would emerge. I couldn't understand why those blobs of color looked so good to me, but somehow the figure left me. I didn't consciously leave it. Moving on to live and study in New York City, he admitted that he didn't know anything about abstraction in a formal way. His art education, of course, had focused on precision and replica, and except for his own gestural exercises in mainly watercolor. It wasn't until he met the artist Franz Klein in New York that he understood that his paintings just didn't have to have a human subject. After marriage to Pam Natalini and their trips to France and Italy, the couple settled in New York City. In the early 50s, he studied with experimental painter Hans Hoffmann, who considered Pace to be one of his best students. He got to know painters Lee Krasner and Jackson Pollock and Elaine and Willem de Kooning, freeing himself to explore shape and spatial relationships established by color upon canvas and experimenting with large areas of thick paint and his own expressive language and spontaneity of mark making. Grouped with the second generation of New York school painters, he was known as an abstract expressionist. By the 1960s, his interests were veering back toward figurative painting. He recalled that while stretching a canvas prior to painting, one day he noticed a robin, a robin watching me. I needed to paint that robin. I stopped and did a watercolor of it, and that really started me on the road back to figurative art. His later paintings throughout his life are composed of paint laid less thickly and once down on canvas not reworked or smeared into large fields of color. His focus became the suggestion of figure and landscape. These later paintings feature open areas of canvas and subject matter reminiscent of domesticity and familiarity. In his figures of running horses or humans at work or leisure set within personal environments. Some evoke the coastal main areas of Stonington, where Pam and Stephen Pace made their home for decades before returning to the Midwest. Today, their farmhouse in Stonington harbors residencies for artists through the auspices of the Maine College of Art. <laughs>